Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. My name is Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to jump into the basics of doing audio. Yes, the MSP side of Max MSP. It's going to be pretty exciting stuff. I think we've learned enough about some like basic concepts of how to program themes in Max to really do some cool audio stuff today. So I'm going to show you guys that we're gonna get started let's just jump right into it but the very first thing we need to know before jumping into it is about the options tab and under the options tab this audio status tab more specifically when you click that it brings up your audio status window which shows you the driver you're using uh, which by default should be the core audio and then your input device and your output device which by default is your built-in microphone and your built-in output if you want to use a different microphone or a different speaker this is where you set that you can find that microphone or that speaker in this drop down menu down here there's some other crazy stuff with uh you know your sampling rate your io vector size um scheduling an overdriver when we get into more audio stuff that is like pretty advanced and complex that's when this stuff is going to become more important but for now just you know this is your basic sampling rate for a lot of stuff and your io vector your signal vector it's better to get that stuff down as low as possible um but sometimes that can cause audio issues and you need to bump it back up. So it's about finding a balance. Uh, <clears throat> schedule and overdriver, also very important for audio timing stuff, um, but can cause a lot of issues if you're doing audio and visual stuff at the same time. So uh, just be aware of that. And then, you know, your input and your output driver. I wouldn't mess with this stuff unless you get into very complicated uh, audio multi-channel type stuff which maybe one day we'll talk about <laughs> um, but for now that's all you need to know about your audio status window so let's look at some audio objects the first audio object you got to learn about everybody's favorite audio object the cycle tilde object which creates a sinusoidal oscillator and then uh, you basically just have to give it a frequency number so we're gonna say 220 which is now creating a sine wave sinusoidal oscillator that is oscillating at 220 hertz per second, which in music, math, physics, theory stuff uh, is equal to an A note. And if we want to hear this note, we have to tell it to go to our speakers. If you want sound to come out of the speakers in Max, you have to be very specific about that. You say go to the speakers. There's two objects that we can use to do this. One is called the EZ DAC. That's E Z D A C tilde. And it's your audio output and on off button. And it creates this cool graphic icon of a speaker that is our audio output. It's got a left and a right inlet. This is your left and right channel for audio. Um, the other object is just DAC. Uh, this is slightly different because it doesn't create a cool icon. Um, what's cool about the DAC is if you're doing multi-channel stuff, you can define how many channels of audio you want, which is pretty sweet. Um, but in, yeah, for beginners, it's definitely better to use the easy DAC, the EZ DAC, because it just lets you know that you are, in fact, sending this to your audio output and not audio out input. There is audio input stuff. We can also bring audio in to Max, uh, and that's the EZ ADC. Um, and it gives you this cool graphic icon of a microphone. And similarly, we have the ADC object where we could define, one, uh, you know, how many channels of audio input we want as well. And these are super useful um, for that reason. I'm going to move this out of the way because uh, this is a cool object to know about, but we're not going to use it right now. All we want is our audio output, and we want to send this uh, sinusoidal oscillator to our audio output by clicking and dragging a patch cord across just like that. And now we hear this wonderful A note frequency that is our sine wave uh, sound. And at this point, you may notice something different about these patch cords. They are striped and it's like a cool yellow gray stripe. It reminds me of a bumblebee. Um, these are our audio signal patch cords. Um, they are colored differently to let you know we're dealing with audio signal data. When you do other stuff in Max MSP, uh, you get gray patch cords, and that's because you're dealing with a different data type. That's just plain basic data. 
It's, you know, integers and float numbers. It's very basic. Audio signal data is a different data type and therefore it works differently. You can't like patch a cycle t object into a counter object because the counter is just a numerical data type and cycle tilde is a uh, audio type. So they just don't mesh. Um, but you can patch like counters and things into cycles because if we hover over the inlet of the cycle, it says it accepts both a signal and a float value. So we can actually patch a float number box into our cycle and use this to change the value of that frequency and get all kinds of cool, crazy notes. Um, but we can't, you know, do the opposite. We can't take this cycle and we can't patch the cycle into the float number box because the float number box doesn't accept audio signal data. I am trying, it is not letting me. So uh, audio signal objects can only be patched to other audio signal objects. And you know they're an audio signal object because they have this tilde in it. All audio signal objects are going to have a tilde at the end. And you that is just how you know it's an audio signal object. The other way is through these colored patch cords. If it's striped like this, it's audio signal. Um, cool. So <laughs> that's the rundown with the basics of audio signal and data. And now let's make something cool. So you're, not, you're noticing that this note is uh, generating at a constant tone. We just constantly are hearing this sound. Um, if we want to make this more musical, we have to be able to control that sound in some way. And the first step to being able to control this sound is controlling the amplitude of the sine wave, which is equal to the volume. If we attach this to this object called scope tilde, which is a very cool and useful object for visualizing audio data, we see we get this crazy uh, sound wave shape, which this is our note right now. It's the, it's the sound wave data of this note. And um, if we want to turn the volume down, we're just going to take this like top maximum part and shrink it closer to the bottom where it will be at a value of zero and we can't hear anything anymore. And to do that, we just have to multiply this audio signal value by a, a number. Um, it's using math to make music. And we can do this with the multiplication tilde object. This lets us multiply audio signals by a number value. It's different than the multiplication object, which just lets you multiply numerical values. Because this is an audio signal and we're dealing with audio, we have to have that tilde in there. So we're going to take the output of this cycle we're going to patch this multiplication tilde object in between, pass that cycle back out, and now we're not hearing anything because nothing has been defined in this multiplication object. So all the audio signal output of this cycle is coming through. We're multiplying it by zero because nothing's been defined, and therefore no sound is being returned. We can't hear anything. Our volume is now off. We can attach a float number box into this inlet because this inlet accepts float number values to define the value that we're going to multiply the audio signal by. And as we start to turn this up, we'll hear our audio starting to come back and we can even see it in that scope object. It is slowly going to grow over time as I increase this number and our volume is also going to increase until we get to one and we have the full return of our sound. And that is a basic multiplication um, rule, basically. You're multiplying a value by one, therefore you get a return of the same value. But when you multiply a value by zero, you get zeros. Math, very cool for making music in Max MSP. Um, <laughs> so, we have our sine wave uh, sound. We can change the frequency, we can change the amplitude and the volume. Um, let's make it even more musical by adding what is known commonly in music as a attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. Uh, if you're pretty, pretty new to music, the idea of an attack, decay, sustain, release is basically the path or journey that the sound wave takes. Um, and it, we can create a lot of cool sound objects and 
basically create a lot of cool sounds uh, by changing the ADSR envelope, as it's commonly referred to. And uh, a pretty cool object to do that in Max MSP is called this function object. And the function object is a graphical UI object, which means we can click in it and create these cool line points. That is what function does. You click and you create points that um, then create lines between the points. And then we can get a return of all of these values um, in this line format which if we map into this amplitude uh, multiplication object we have going on, that means our sound signal is going to take the shape of this function object. Um, it, it's going to, you know, come in this quickly, decay this quickly, sustain for this period, and then after this amount of time be released. It's an ADSR envelope. Um, and to get this to be our amplitude, we have to use the line tilde object. We've talked about line before, but the line tilde object is for the audio signal. And you're going to, I hope you're noticing a pattern with these tilde objects. We have a lot of the same objects uh, in Max, um, and we have we have repeats of them with just a tilde at the end so that they do the same function but on audio signals. This is very important because uh, you just can't forget that tilde. It has to have that tilde there so it knows we're dealing with audio data. Um, but it's very, it, Max makes it easy because it's the same object name. We have a regular line for regular data and we have a line tilde for our audio data. And it's all uh, dandy. <laughs> um, all right, so now that we uh, have our line tilde object and we know it functions the exact same as our regular line object, we can patch this in here. And handily, one of the outputs of function is all points in line format. So that means it's going to output all of these points in the format for our line object to draw lines between them which is exactly what we need. So we're gonna take that outlet and patch it into our line object. And now when this function object receives a bang, it's going to take that path. So I can click it and there we go. We had that note at, with that ADSR attack to it. And we could totally get crazy with this. We can really make this whatever we want, however many points we want. That is the beauty of Max MSP. The world is your design, your crazy ideas, whatever you want to do. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of clicking in it. We could smooth that out, but the rhythm is really fun. I really enjoy that. So if we want to trigger this to happen every single time there is a new note, that's where our trigger object is once again going to come in handy. We learned about this in our useful objects video last video. Um, and we're going to use it now because we're going to say trigger FB, which is going to uh, instantiate our trigger. It's going to pass a bang first out of this outlet and a float value out of this outlet. Um, and we're going to patch that in here and we're going to patch that out here. So our float goes through to the cycle object to set the pitch and our bang comes out and uh, uh, triggers the function object to give it the envelope for the sound. So now whenever we change this note, it's gonna play. And that's pretty cool. Um, so that's a good start, but um, maybe, you know, the fact that we're working with frequencies and cycles is very confusing to you. Cause you know, who, who knows that? Like I happen to know 220 is an A note. Um, but like, I don't know the whole chart. I don't know every single frequency value. Who's got time for that? Um, <laughs> thankfully, there's this awesome object in Max MSP called M2F. And what it does is it converts a MIDI note number to a frequency number. So we don't have to worry about what frequencies are. We can send uh, this object a MIDI value and it will convert it to the proper frequency value. So we've seen this object before too, K slider. We uh, know that this is similar to uh, our function in that it is a graphical object that you can click and interact with. Um, and we know that when you do that, it passes a MIDI value for the note you're clicking out of this output. So we can use this K slider 
pass it into our M2F object, which will convert it from a MIDI to a float. And we can set that into our uh, cycle to determine the pitch. And now it's just like playing a piano. If you want a C note, that's your C note. And that's your lower octave C note. This is a A, G. And we can really start to create some crazy music already just with this. And all we're doing is dealing with audio signals and um, we're using some MIDI values to create these audio signals um, at the proper pitch. So it makes a little bit more sense to us if we're coming from a musical background. All right, I think I'm gonna end the video right there. We did cover a lot of stuff today. We talked a lot about the audio domain of Max MSP, and we learned some pretty basic and invaluable things like all our audio objects are gonna have this tilde in it, and these are what audio patch chords work, and audio signal data only works on other audio signal data. We can't, we can't mix and match audio data. We can't mix data, yo. You know, that's how it is. Um, so with that in mind, um, from this point on, I think our beginner series is going to start to diverge into a few different beginner series. I want to continue talking about like, you know, general Mac stuff and sharing very helpful Max MSP techniques and tricks I've learned and talking about really cool objects and really complex objects and breaking them down um, so they're easy to understand. But I also want to show more cool audio stuff. And I also want to start to talk about jitter and doing visual stuff. So that's kind of where this is going to start to go. Um, and I hope you guys are all along for the journey. I think we're having a good time. We learned a lot of cool stuff today. We're going to learn a lot of cool stuff in the future. Um, Max MSP, pretty cool. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It lets me know I'm doing a good job teaching you guys and uh, makes me feel good. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I will answer them as soon as I can. And if you really want to help support me, please take a look at <clears throat> my Patreon where uh, we're going to do some extra learning. I am putting up some in-depth tutorial breakdowns of projects I've done so we get a look at the actual code of that. Um, I'm also doing exclusive tutorials, so like more advanced techniques um, for people who are looking to learn just a little bit more. And I'm also sharing some cool art stuff. I have a lot that I've been working on and I'm just trying to get ready and gear it up to be released there. Um, and I'm very excited about that because uh, half of, you know, Max MSP and teaching is just showing you all the cool possibilities that are done. So I'm very excited to share that stuff. Uh, and yeah, if you want to support me, that's the best place to do it, I think. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope to see you guys in the next video. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.